Creativity is a fickle thing. Sometimes all the discipline and experience in the world isn't going to be enough to inspire you to write something if you're not feeling properly motivated. In this video, I'm going to show you a plugin that I frequently use to get my creative juices flowing at work and at play. It's called Dice Roller. Dice Roller is an Obsidian plugin that was created by the developer Jeremy Valentine to help you roll virtual dice in tabletop role-playing games within Obsidian. Now that may have been where I started using it, but these days I also use Dice Roller in a lot of non-gaming contexts. Dice Roller works by using the syntax for a code snippet, which is a pair of backticks. So after you've got it installed and enabled, at any point you can just type dice, and then the most common use case for it is to roll dice. If you have live preview enabled, once you exit out of that line, you'll see an actual rendering of the result, as well as a little icon of dice here. And when you hover over it, it says that this rolled a 1d20, so because I typed 1d20 within it, this is rolling a 20-sided die virtually. It's not actually rolling it. And the result was 5. Now, if I want to change that, I can just click on it again and hover over it, and it says that it rolled an 18. Now, the interesting thing is that I can also add modifiers to it. So I can say 1d20 plus 4 or 1d20 times 2 or whatever it is that's relevant to whatever I'm doing. Now I've already recorded a few videos where I go into my use of Dice Roller in the context of role-playing games, so I'm just gonna leave a link there and not go too far into it now. But there are other things that you can do with it as well. If you want to roll percentile dice, meaning a 100-sided dice, you can do 1D percentage instead. Let me show you what that looks like. 1D percentage, it'll roll out of 100 and it rolled a four, but you know, it could have been anything from one to 100. Here are other things that you can do with it. You would basically just copy whatever is here and put it in this part. So it's always within the back text, dice, colon, and then whatever formula you want to use. So you could also get it to randomly select a number between, in this case, three and five, you could also have it roll using fudge or fate dice. That's specific to certain games. It looks kind of like this. It's a six sided die, but it has two blank faces, two positives and two negatives, and each one counts as one. I don't play Fantasy Age, but apparently they have different types of dice as well, and you can have dice roller roll on that. You can also say things like keep the highest, so you can roll two d20s and then keep the highest if you want advantage or keep the lowest if you want disadvantage. And you can do the same thing for just dropping the highest or lowest. Um, dice roller can also explode dice, meaning if you have a d20, for example, whenever you roll a 20, you could say, well, now you get to roll an extra die. And then you could say things like roll a d8 and then automatically re-roll the lowest one. You can also have dice roller report on successes rather than the actual number. So you can say things like anything on a d10 that's over a six is considered a success. Now roll me 10 of them and see how many successes you get. And there are also modifier conditions that let you determine whether something needs to be re-rolled or exploded or combined. So I went a little bit more quickly over the different ways that you can use Dice Roller to use dice for you in the context of tabletop role-playing games because I already have videos on how I do just that. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about the other ways that you can use Dice Roller, maybe not even for games. One of the hidden features of Dice Roller is that you can also actually use it to roll on data view fields, tables, tags, and blocks. So in this Patreon vault, I'm going to create a new note and it's going to be Dice Roller examples. So now I'm going to create some data view parameters. Let's say we're creating a task and this one has a priority of one being the highest priority out of five. And then maybe we could have another one called urgency, which is also from one to five. And let's say this one is a three. So if you wanted to combine both priority and urgency into a single metric, you can actually use dice roller to multiply them. So in the same note, you can just type priority times, remove that second one that was automatically done, urgency, and it says three. 
You can also add things here. I mean, I don't know why you would, but you could just add a 10, for example, and then you can hover over it. You'll see that the priority is one, urgency is a three, and then 10 was added. You could add an element of randomness. So say 1d10, meaning a single 10 sided die, and then that way it would kind of change from time to time. You can always hit the roller here or you can flip over to preview mode so that you're not always going into the line. See, now you can't actually edit it. So every time that you click on it, it's just going to roll. A common use for dice roller in gaming is to roll on a random table. A random table is a collection of different elements that could be NPCs or non-player characters. It could be ways to describe a location. It could be a list of names. And the idea is that rather than preparing everything, you let these tables randomly determine something that maybe you might not have thought of in the situation. It is based on improvisation. But even outside of gaming, I've found the concept of random tables useful as kind of like a creative reboot. For example, I have a background in performance engineering, which means that I've spent quite a bit of my life trying to figure out how to make applications work faster and more efficiently, especially when there are distributed systems underlying them. That isn't always a straightforward process. It's not a sequential step-by-step -step kind of thing that you follow, and then at the end of it, you end up with something fast. There is an element of experimentation that I actually really enjoy. But at the same time, it can't all be experimentation. There has to be some element of structure. And I think the random tables work really well in this regard. Here's an example of one of my notes in my personal vault where I have some performance test heuristics that I've identified and put in tables. These are normal markdown tables. And the only difference is that I put the signifier at the bottom to kind of identify this table as a code one. Now, in each of these rows, I've identified a common problem that I've seen previously that may not apply to every situation. And then at the top here, I've actually used the dice roller to roll on this. So let me just delete this so that I can talk you through it. So you would still use the same syntax, which is dice. And then I'm going to select the name of this note, which is performance test heuristics. But then within the file name, I'm going to add a carrot, like that's a little arrow. And I called this particular table code. So when I hit enter to select that, it's now going to randomly select one of the elements in this table. Now this is useful because I might not have time during a project cycle to really go through every single possible problem and they might not even all be useful, but there might be enough time to do a few of them. So if I flip over to preview mode, I can just roll through these a little bit and it kind of acts like prompts to help me figure out what to test next. I have the same thing for script and for infrastructure, you know, like maybe if you have databases, hey, I'm calling out indexing here, maybe that's something that I need to look into. Or have I considered using the concepts of dimming and brownout to be able to protect the system from load that was completely unexpected? Maybe I need to start kind of limiting the system internally. This, this table is all about the psychology of performance, how we perceive something as fast. So it talks about things that are going on above the table, for instance, maybe if the computer part is super fast, but the human part isn't tuned accordingly, then it's still, you're still not going to have the results that you want. I also really like the concept of having principles here. So this is a separate table on a different note. So you, it doesn't always have to be in the same note. This principles of testing one has just a single column structure that has a bunch of different principles. And I just threw them into a table, added this principle identifier so that I can bring it in here and then also just go through different principles. And I can always hover over one and then read what I've written about that principle. Now you may have noticed that this dice roller result is 
showing both the problem and the description column. Now, if I just wanted one of them, I could just add a pipe here and then put in problem. That way only the first column is going to be shown. And conversely, I can also just put description here and only this description is going to be shown. Maybe I don't want the name of the problem to be shown. So I could also maybe test myself. But in this case, I just want both of them. Intrinsic to the idea of random tables, though, is the fact that the values that are in it aren't completely arbitrary. They are informed to some degree and somewhat relevant to the topic at hand. If it was completely random and any note could be returned, then that's not always that useful. The next thing that you could do with dice roller is to have it return certain notes based on the tags that you've added to them. For instance, in my daily note, I happen to always have this little dice roller line, which is always going to return the link of any note that's tagged TVZ. Now, this is the tag that I use to signify to myself that something needs to be processed. In short, this is like my inbox or to process list. Now I could just open up the tags here and click on TVZ and then everything that needs to be processed is going to be there. And yes, I do have a lot. So let's just hide that. Or I could just have one randomly shown here for me. And that actually really helps me because I don't have to think about the fact that I have 401 things to process that I haven't gotten around to. I just have to do this one thing, which is a little less daunting. So the syntax for that is hashtag and then your tag, a pipe, and then link. That'll instruct Dice Roller to return the link and rather than the entire note. So if I didn't have link, let me show you. It would just embed the contents of the entire note, which isn't always going to be useful. So let me add that back. And the last thing that you can do with dice roller is to have it return a random block. Now, every note taking tool seems to have its own way to define blocks. And in this plugin for Obsidian, there are certain things that are classified as blocks. Here is the full list. I'm going to highlight a few of them. You can have code. So things that are in code blocks, you can have headings images and lists. So I'm going to go into a page here that I have for forms. Forms are patterns that I've seen in different forms of creative fiction. The idea is to flesh this out so that there's more than a handful of them, but I still do enjoy identifying some of the common tropes that I've found. For example, this trope of a bodyguard that develops romantic feelings. I have three different examples of them and then variations as well. Now I could turn this into a table and then I could add like the signifier here, something like characters, and then I could roll on that, but it's already a list and list is actually one of the block types. So I'm going to test this out by putting something here, forms, and then I'm going to add a pipe character here and then type list. Now it looks like that's actually returning the entire thing. So it's returning this kind of chunk of a list. What I actually want is a list item. So I'm going to go back into that and type item list item. Now it's going to randomly determine one single bullet point or line in this entire list. Now, as you can see, because I didn't specify which section was going to be in here, it's just doing it for any bullet point that it sees in this page that might be useful as well. But if I wanted a result that was just with a character so I'd probably still make it a table or move this entire section into a separate note. And by the way, this doesn't have to stay within this page. So if I go to another page and put it in there, then it's still going to work because it's still going and looking at that page. And I'll also be able to hover over it and see what's within that note. Another thing that I could use is heading and you can actually specify what level of heading you want. If we go to this note on principles of improving work performance, you'll see I have quite a few headings and let's say I really just want to stay on this top level. So this is an H2. That means I can call up dice ruler here and then select this note and then add a pipe character that says heading two. 
And now I should only be able to see either reorganize workers, increase the number of workers, or make existing workers more efficient. So then I can just keep re-rolling and that's exactly what I'm seeing. If I wanted to do the lower level ones, then I'd have to do heading level three. And that way I'm delving into one of those three main topics. So I've already shown you that Dice Roller can return random results within a number range, data view, parameters, tables, tags, and blocks. For all of these though, we've been using the syntax Dice. So let's say when I do 1D20, that's the one that we've been using. However, you can also put dice mod instead. And this time when you exit out of it and go into live preview, it actually returns the result. Now you can change how that result is shown. So if you go into dice roller options here, you can say that you don't want the formula to be shown when you're using modified dice. So that let's try that again. Instead of showing dice 1d20, if you put dice mod, then it just returns the actual result. Now this works for tables too. So if I just have a table here that I'm going to call EO for Esperanto and I can put dice mod, I'll choose dice roller examples. This is that note. And then I'll go back and add EO. So normally I would expect to see a rollable list of results that I can go through, but because I've put dice mod, it just actually shows one of them, which is the second row. I think it's a shame that plugins like Dice Roller are relegated to being only for play when the reality is that playfulness is an attitude. And sometimes all you need to shake yourself out of a creative rut is to have a little bit of fun. Thanks for watching. Menselijke beschaving opkomt en zich ontplooit in spel als spel.